About us and our motives. Hi, both. You gotta love them. Welcome to Preston Table Tennis's random sample testing of these. The Jeweler Super P40 Plus Plastic Ball. Now those of you who are subscribers to our YouTube channel, and thank you to those of you who are, and welcome to those of you who aren't, will probably know that at the end of 2012, we compared a plastic prototype ball given to me by William Hensel when the Australian team visited Preston in July 2012 to play Team GB with a normal celluloid one. Well now we're back. Only it's not the prototype plastic ball that we're reviewing, it's these. The Jeweler Super P40 Plus Plastic Ball. And we're going to be seeing if this plastic ball can really live up to the ITTF's claims of playing similar or identical to the celluloid ball. Now before we start, let's get some things straight. 1. Preston Table Tennis Association is not sponsored by any table tennis manufacturers. 2. I'm not paid for making these videos, nor is anyone who takes part in them. 3. These balls that you can see here were not given to me by any table tennis manufacturer or supplier. I bought these balls when Bill Thornton brought his stall down to the England vs Australia International held at Euclid Sir Tom Finney Sports Centre on the 20th of July this year. 4. Preston Table Tennis Association has no hidden agenda. Because of a lack of information about these balls, all we wanted to do was find out for ourselves if these plastic balls played the same or similar to these celluloid balls. And if they differed, how? So we're not evangelists of these plastic balls? but neither are we here to demonise it. 5. Opinions expressed here are exactly that, opinions, and honest ones. Everyone is different and everyone is entitled to an opinion. Just because ours might be different to yours, well that doesn't make us wrong or you wrong. So, if you're going to comment on these videos, especially here on YouTube, please do so with the respect for the people you're talking about and the people who'll be reading your comments. We have a lot of juniors who visit our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Now that's out of the way, let's consider what we tested these balls for, plastic ball, and how we actually did our tests. Selecting a random sample. All these balls were bought by me from Bill Thornton, and in actual reality, there's nine boxes of the plastic ball and three boxes of jeweler celluloid ball. Ideally, I'd have bought one box from four different sellers. But as so few of these plastic balls have been manufactured at the time of my purchase, even if I'd done that, there's a pretty good chance that these plastic balls would have come from the same manufactured batch. Now ideally, I'd have also have bought 24 of these celluloid balls, but unfortunately, I can't afford to do that. And if I'd have tested them and these, I'd have been doing this for years. And I've got a life. At least, I think I had a life before I started doing these videos. So having bought nine boxes of these plastic balls, 54 in total, because that's roughly how many I'll need to feed our TT Matic 500 robot for future equipment test videos, I took five unopened boxes down to our table tennis centre. And once there, I randomly chose four boxes, which we then used for all our tests. What we tested for? We tested for the same things the ITTF tests for in Technical Leaf at T3. And then we compared our results with the specifications and requirements listed in T3. In particular, we tested for 1. Quality, packaging and appearance 2. Seam, surface of the ball and hardness 3. Luminance and colour 4. Bounce and conformity 5. Veer, which is a measure of the roundness of the ball 6. Size and sphericity 7. Weight conformity and regularity How we tested now I don't have a laboratory to conduct these tests in, nor do I have hundreds of thousands of pounds needed to buy the equipment used in completing the ITTF's tests. So we accept there are limitations to our results, and the conclusions we draw from them. But they are consistent for this plastic ball and this celluloid ball. So in comparative terms at least, they're valid. And I'll also explain and demonstrate how we did the testing, so you'll be aware of any possible limitations before we discuss results and share our conclusions. And because table tennis is played by humans and not testing machines in laboratories, 
or my front room. We've also tested these balls in a variety of playing situations with players of different styles, ages, experience, ability and equipment to see if they could notice a difference between this Jula Super 40 Plus plastic ball and this the Jula Super 40 celluloid ball. So by the end of our videos and analysis you should have a good idea of what the physical differences are between Jula's plastic and celluloid balls and whether or not in our tests they pass T3 specifications and what they like to play with compared to their celluloid cousins. Format of our videos. Now because of the amount of testing that we've done here at Preston Table Tennis Association and the volume of information collected and based on feedback and help I've received from Haggis Fee and Baal, friends from one of a kind in my table tennis forums, I've broken our analysis and results down into smaller bite-sized video chunks and at the start of those videos I've included an index which is going to give you information such as what the ITTF tests for, how our tests were done, our results and our conclusions. This way it's going to save you time because you're going to be able to jump to the bits of the videos that are interesting to you and skip the ones which won't be. And I'll be staggering the release of these videos over the next few days. I'm not going to put them all out at once because there's a lot of information there. So without further ado let's get on with the testing. Thanks for watching.